board. Okay. Clearly, you are showing off today, Carla Hall. Look, look at you. Oh my goodness. Hello. How are you? I can't hear you. Is it me? All right. Hold on. I don't have you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. All right. Showing out. What girl? What? Stop. I could. Mm. All right. Biscuit. All right. Can I just can I tell you something about me? First of all, I travel with my biscuit kit. Okay. Wait. Let me get my pen. What the hell? What the hell is it? First of all, welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank, you, thank you for joining us um, after you had about 12 hours of taping. You look lovely, by the way. Uh, what thank are you, you filming? What are you doing? I'm filming the Halloween Baking Championship. Okay, so, so people will see it at Halloween. <laughs> yeah, this will, it's the sixth season. I've been doing this show since season one, and it's one of my favorites. So I always have uh, Halloween in July. And because this is a very unique situation because we have all of these COVID procedures. And so we're staying in like a villa. So instead of like a regular hotel, so I have a kitchenette and, um, girl, I've been having such a great time. I made greens last night. No, you didn't. Yes, I collard, did. Collard, mustard, turnip, what? Um, collard, greens, kale, greens, and mustard. mustard. Oh, you, you mixed them. Yeah. Okay, collards, kale, and, and mustard greens. Mustard, yeah. What did you season them with? I actually make them vegan, and I have been peddling my greens to everybody around. They're like, oh, I'm vegetarian. Oh, I can't eat your greens. Oh, soul food is so heavy and laden with meat and pork. And I'm like, actually, it's not. <laughs> actually, it's an agrarian cuisine, and yes, it usually has a lot of pork, I mean, sometimes, but I make them with smoked paprika, so they are vegan. Okay, smoke. Come on with the smoked mm -hmm. paprika. All right, but we're not here to talk about the greens, the we're beans, not. the tomatoes, the yams. Black. We're here to talk about biscuits. All right, now, um, first, stop doing that. I am trying to lose this COVID nineteen. Get stop, stop, <laughs> Carla. First of all, how do you maintain your figure? Are you just like naturally? This is your body. This is, I, I, uh, this is my body. I am naturally thin. However, the reason I do the recess every day is because one, it's for my mind, like to shake off things, but also just to be moving. And you don't have to do some crazy 30 minutes, hours a day. So 10 minutes a day actually for my body works. Okay. And your 10 minutes is what? Running? J j um, I do jump rope. I may do hula hoop. I might dance for 10 minutes. Um, it's whatever. Skip ball. It's just moving. It's just okay. moving. Just get up and move. I mean, it could be stretching, but just get up and give yourself 10 minutes. I mean, I figure people are worth 10 minutes. If you tell yourself, you're like, oh, I don't want to do it. I'm like, do, are you worthy of 10 minutes? Can you not give yourself 10 minutes? 10 minutes is the least you can do. I agree. Yes. All right. So do you eat that whole plate of biscuits though? No, I do not. But let me tell you what I did. So, um, and I'm just going to lift it up here one more time. So this is just the plain biscuit. So you can, it's just really plain, but biscuit. I decided, and this one is stuffed. What, what, what's in there? Um, it is stuffed with Sausage gravy. Okay, Carla. <laughs> so. Oh, did I introduce you? you? Oh, cool. She's here, y'all. This is Carla. It's Carla Hall. All right. Um, okay. What What is your fascination with biscuits? And when did you fall in love with the Because you are one of the best biscuit making people that I know ever in the history of biscuits. Okay, so let me tell you about my whole biscuit thing. First of all, a lot of people think, if you're a cook, they think that you have been cooking forever. They think that, oh, you grew up cooking, you wanted to do it. I didn't. I had a lot of careers before I started cooking. But <clears throat> when I was living in London, I knew my grandmother made amazing biscuits. When I was living in London, there was a recipe that like I came model. across. That was when you were modeling? I was modeling, right. That was after being an accountant, you know, as one would do, you know about face, just do something completely different. 
so I was in, <laughs> I was in Paris and then London. Um, and then I would get the newspaper. It was the independent. And I, there was a recipe and I was always collecting these recipes from magazines and newspapers. And there was a recipe for scones. And I was like, oh, let me try to make this. But then I was feeling homesick. So I took the scone recipe and then I said, well, let me add um, some version of buttermilk, but try to make biscuits. Cause I, I was missing my grandmother. And my the Sunday suppers at my grandmother's house became sort of the thing that got me through being homesick when I was traveling a lot. And so I was trying to recreate that without really knowing what I was doing. It, I had that connection to my family and Sunday suppers. And my grandmother used to make the, the most amazing biscuits with that tin um, cup. Sometimes she would cut, you know that, tin, that jewel tone, those jewel tone cups? Remember those? Do you remember those metal yeah. cups that, that yes. you know? My grandmother could burn Julia Sweeper, Augusta, Georgia, made the best sweet tea to this day and the best potato salad I've ever eaten. But yeah, she was also very good with the biscuits and the cornbread. That was her thing, which we the should do. The cornbread, okay. Um, so my grandmother actually gave me her biscuit cutter that was all beat up and tinny and, you know, but I, I wanted it. So I started, I mean, I grew up making biscuits, but it, biscuits became a thing when I started traveling because I wasn't cooking before 25. I, I, I didn't have to cook, you know, my grandmother cooked, you know, um, and I was in college. There was always somebody cooking, but when it came to recreating my food memories, I started making biscuits. And I, when I had a lunch delivery service, I would make biscuits and smoked turkey. And, mm. and, and they were flat initially, but you know, just a thousand hours of doing something, you get good or you get better. And so Karen, when I was making these biscuits, I, I would give them to people. I'm like, I'm going to give you the first one, you know, like, and then they would come back and they would buy a lot of them. That was my whole thing. I will, I will give you and gift to you the first biscuit with smoked turkey. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a thing for many years. I'm going to have to go into recovery or fast tomorrow because the, thank God it's late because I'm not eating anymore after seven. So thank you. Thank you for that. Even though you, wherever you are, it's still light out. That's yeah, so I'm on the West Coast, so it's early. It's um uh, like just seven thirty. Okay, all right. So you you made the scones, but then you put buttermilk in them, and they tasted like your grandmother's biscuits, or no? I had it. I had to tweak it, um, but they were getting close to what my grandmother's. You know, it's it's. We're always like, you know, people say you can never go home again, but you're always constantly trying to chase this recipe. But I think what the biscuits became, the, the more that I made them the way that I nurtured people and the, the closer they became like my grandmother's. Mm -hmm. So if, if you try to do a recipe like, oh, I want my grandmother's recipe and you're just anxious about it and you just want to do the recipe like to recreate, but what you're not creating is the heart and the soul and the love of that recipe, which is why our soul food is so intoxicating. But you have to capture the soul of it. You have to capture the heart. And that's what I try to do with the biscuits. Do that. Because, you know, it'll call for a cup of baking powder or soda and a cup of flour and there'll be some salt and there'll I don't know what the biscuit recipe yeah. is. You'll give a, you know, but the ingredients are the ingredients. Right, right. How do you, you know, and, and you bake for this amount of time, you can follow a recipe and have success. Right. How do you put soul into that? Like, what is that formula? It's, honestly, it's your intention. So what I started doing, I started making biscuits with strangers. And I started this in New York. And people would come up to me on the street. They're like, oh, hey, Carl, I know you from Top Chef. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Or I know you from The Chew. And, and I would say, do you know how to make a biscuit? And they were like, no. I'm like, can I come over to your house and make biscuits? <laughs> and, and strangers. All right, strangers, I know that. Part. Yeah, you are that person. Okay, I, go ahead. I am that person. And because, one, I wanted them to understand what a good biscuit tasted like. 
or how to make a good biscuit. Because, you know, people would send you to a place like, oh my God, this place has great biscuits and they were not good, right? So it's either learn how to make one or learn how to recognize one. So I started doing that. And I was doing this more and more, and it became not really about the biscuit, but it was about making bread together versus breaking bread together. And so it's become this thing about community. And so I think that that's what our food is about. You know, it, it really is about heart and because we're, you know, as black people, we're people, people, we are people, people, we are about relationships with people. And I think that for me, the biscuit has become a symbol of that. And I have watched people go from not knowing how to make a biscuit to making really great biscuits. But what I teach them, I said, don't worry about all of the intellectual things about it. Think about who you want to serve it to. Think mm. about who you want to um give this little morsel of love to and if you make that and and i know it sounds oversimplified but our food is not hard it's not complicated it's it, i mean flour and butter and you know salt baking powder all of that um buttermilk but it, it's it's muscle memory and it's nothing like watching somebody's hands but it's also wanting to feed somebody to nourish them and to nurture them okay Let's get to the recipe. Okay. Do you need a particular size bowl? It's a certain kind of flour. Is there certain kind of butter? Can you use ghee? Can you can you use shortening? Like what? What? All right. So I I like a wide flat bowl because I want to be able to get in there. And then the the bowl is too tight. You really can't get in there to mix it. So I like a wide flat bowl. These are the things that I travel with, Karen. I always travel with my biscuit cutters. I travel with grandmothers, a, or did you go? Did you go get new biscuit cutters? I got new biscuit cutters, ones From? that are metal and sharp, or I mean, they could be plastic as long as they are sharp. But I've made biscuits with a glass, but it doesn't work as well. So I travel with measuring spoons, biscuit cutters, a box grater um a rubber spatula like a firm rubber spatula and um what else do i travel with for my biscuits and that that's pretty much it i don't i don't travel with the bowl so okay so the oh my, i travel with my own measuring cups just in case there aren't dry measuring cups wherever i go so those five things right when i'm making biscuits i like king arthur flour I know there are a lot of Southerners who like white lily. Um, there's the difference between a winter wheat and a, a, a summer wheat. There's also the difference between um, the hardiness bleached flour versus unbleached flour. The, I mean, all of that, all of that. And a lot of people don't think about that. So I like an unbleached winter wheat. It tastes a little nutty. It browns in the oven. Martha White or Lily White, it doesn't brown, but if you're used to that light, really soft wheat or some of that biscuit, that's fine. I, I um, so like, let me show you this. So this color of a biscuit, you won't get that with White Lily. You're okay. gonna get something that's more like this. Right. Right? So, and, and it's, it's whatever you're used to. Okay, so I have all of those things. It's all about measuring the flour. A lot of times people don't know how to measure flour. You have to aerate it either with your hands or a fork or a whisk, and then you spoon it in the measuring cup, and then you scrape it off the top like with a flat um, knife or a spatula or a bench scraper. That is a perfect cup, two and a half cups of flour, okay? Then it's a tablespoon of baking powder. It's a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of sugar because you have baking soda, which is about a quarter teaspoon, okay? And then you're gonna mix all of that up. Then I take my shortening, two tablespoons of shortening. The sh what does the shortening do? The shortening gives you that crispy edge, that top 
right? The outer edge is going to give you that crispiness and you mix that in. You don't want pea size. You're going to mix it all into the flour because the shortening is going to coat the proteins of the flour, not to get scientific, but it's all necessary. Then you're going to have cold butter, unsalted. It doesn't shortening matter what butter. Shortening and butter? Shortening and butter. The shortening is going to give you the crispiness. The butter is going to give you the flavor because butter has water in it. Shortening is pure fat, right? It doesn't have a lot of water. So you want cold butter because when that butter is cold and it goes into the refrigerator by staying, I mean, into the oven by staying cold, it's going to release the steam. The steam creates the layers. The steam gives you lift and the flakiness. That's why you want cold butter. So you're going to grate the butter. Let me tell you, I taught kids at my restaurant in New York how to make biscuits. And, and let me, Karen, let me just tell you about this one guy. Um, he had never made biscuits in his life. And I said, I'm going to make you the biscuit maker. He's like, Miss Carla, I don't know how to make biscuits. I said, that's okay. I'm going to teach you. So we did side by side. He put his first batch of biscuits in and he turns to me and he's like, hey, literally, I tell you, kid you not, he had the biscuit and he's open and he's like, Miss Carla, is this my biscuit? I was like, yeah, that's your biscuit. I've never seen that boy smile ever, ever. <laughs> but he made that biscuit and the pride that he felt, I'm telling you, it was, it was, uh, it was priceless. It was worth everything to me to see him smile because he had accomplished something, he became my biscuit maker. And so when you have this biscuit, and I decided to teach it to grate the butter, don't pinch it, don't cut it in small pieces, a grater is going to give you consistency. I, I don't have to tell you how to grate anything. I do have to tell you, oh, how do you get pea size and it's fill it, and after you make your 10,000 ones, you're gonna get it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but. You grate the butter and then you toss the flour in the butter, making sure that the butter pieces are separated. And then you pinch them lightly just to cut the butter into that flour, just a little bit, just pick it up and drop, pick it up and drop. And then you're gonna put a little, make a little well in your bowl because it's now it's wide. And then you're going to put buttermilk. And then you're like, oh, what kind of buttermilk? Look. There's the low fat buttermilk. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand low fat buttermilk. Is it butter or is it margarine? Why? That doesn't even make sense. That's an oxymoron. Buttermilk is the, is the fat that floats on top of the milk. So what is, what is this low fat buttermilk you say? So and you're eating a biscuit. So if you're going to do the biscuit, go all the way with the biscuit. Like stop playing low right. fat biscuit. But it's hard to find full fat buttermilk. And so there's somebody who's out there thinking, oh, I can put um, vinegar or lemon juice in my milk and make buttermilk. No, you cannot. And don't do it because that doesn't give you the fat that you need. So you can take whole milk, equal parts, whole fat sour cream and combine them. That will give you a really beautiful buttermilk type the, the sourness, or you can take the low fat buttermilk and mix it with sour cream. That will also give it to you. Now, the reason I tell people to do milk and sour cream, because those are two ingredients that they will usually have at home. Most people don't have buttermilk, right? So you mix those up, you pour it into your dry mixture. And by the way, that dry mixture with the butter, you could put that in a zip top bag and put it in your refrigerator and, 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 it, and have it at the ready. And when you wanna make biscuits, you just pull it out and you just add your buttermilk. So, you know, you can make biscuits on a dime and it's always two parts of the dry mixture to one part wet mixture. So if you wanted to make two biscuits, you can have a cup of that mix or a half a cup or a cup and a half a cup of wet, right? If you wanna make two biscuits, you take a cup of that dry mixture and a half a cup of the wet mixture and you can make just two biscuits for yourself. So this is, this is also a little cheat that you can um, do. And, and you, you mix it up. Am I giving you too much detail? 
No, this is good because I know I just wrote it all down, even though I'm definitely not going to be doing these biscuits until I reach my goal weight because you, Satan is a liar, Carla Hall, and I will not. And again, you know, I don't have any impulse control. So if I make biscuits, I'm eating the whole plate. I know you sat there with the biscuits and you're not, you're probably going to not even eat one. Oh, no, I will. I will. But you know what? I've eaten so many initially you you'll eat a lot because you're like oh it's new but then you're like oh i mean i've been making biscuits for 30 years so yeah but they are so delicious so this is what's next you put the um the buttermilk in the dry mixture you take your spatula which is a stiff rubber spatula and you're going to make these hash oh sorry you're going to make these hash marks in the bowl and then fold hash marks and fold don't over mix it then Here's a tip. You are going to spray in a square, either oil spray or butter in a square, just to uh, where you're gonna put your, your, your biscuit mix, flour, rub it in that square. That, that oil is gonna keep the flour in place. Now, when you put this wet dough on your counter, it's not gonna all stick to your biscuit dough. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Got you. I got you. And you can do that with any, like with pie crust or whatever. You just work in like a little square. All right. So now what you're going to do, and I never use a rolling pin. I only use my hands. I put a little more flour down. I dump that biscuit dough down. I pat, 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 pat until it's about um, that thick. And then I fold it into thirds and then I turn it. 90 degrees, pat, 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 fold it. All of that patting and folding are what we call turns in uh, baking, and that's giving you your layers. I do it a third time, turn, pat, 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 fold, fold, and now you have this, what looks like almost a letter, right? You have something like this, and then you pat it out. You look for the pretty side. The pretty side has to be down on the counter. You take your biscuit cutter, you put it into flour, tap, tap, tap the excess off. You go right down, you turn it. Don't turn as you're going down, right down, shake it out. And then Karen, then you turn the biscuit over because the pinched edge is now going to be on top. And that pinched edge is going to rise like even if it's an eighth inch more rather than keeping it the other way down. You're going to have all your biscuits done you're going to put them in an oven at 450 degrees and they're going to rise beautifully. The oven's preheated? Oh yeah, please. The oven is preheated, y'all. And can I say one other thing? A lot of times after you cut the biscuits, a lot of times people start balling up that dough, right? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. You have that dough and you're going to take it like this. You're going to put flour on the sides of your hands. You're going to press that dough together. Now the dough is just like this, the thickness. You're going to turn it over on its side. And you're going to pat, pat, pat. That's what you're going to punch out Make again. Another. another another round of biscuits so that your biscuits aren't overworked. But um, go ahead, Karen, and talk because I am <laughs> going to eat a biscuit. I do have a, I have some of this. Um, what is that? Sauce is gravy inside. Oh, that's the one with the gravy. So you don't put preserves or you're not, you're not a jelly or jam person? Good. Yes, I have that here too. Okay, like, all right. And you made those right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. There you uh, Okay, oh. she's eating. Oh, God. She, wait. <laughs> okay. So. You were eating watermelon this, last week. I'm eating biscuits this week. Yes. And I'm, and I'm, I think I was doing better for myself, but um, th- thank goodness I'm not going to go out and get any buttermilk. She's going to put an extra gravy on the. Okay. All right, Carla. Showing out. Carla Hall is showing out. Okay. So what I want to do with these sessions is it's not just about the food because people wanted more of a recipe and I'm glad that you were able to give it, but there's an origin story to everything that we eat. And I think, you know, if we ate with more purpose, especially culturally and and understood why we put the things into our body that we do, that we have an appreciation and we respect it more. Right. So when you think about a biscuit and they wouldn't have used butter. They would have used lard, right? And you think about pantry ingredients, what was available. 
flour, some kind of raising agent, and fat, and then some kind of milk. That's all a biscuit is. And so what they would do in the olden days is they would heat up that cast iron skillet in the hearth and there would be some fat down there. Sometimes I might even take the biscuit, dunk it in some lard, and then put it into that skillet where it starts sizzling. And you put that skillet or you're hanging on, the, on a hook in the hearth right into the flames and let it bake that way. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you might have for sopping. So the biscuits were about sopping other things. So it could be like sopping a gravy. The reason that you would have gravy is because you don't need that much sausage because you have those same pantry items, flour and milk. Now your little piece of sausage is enough to feed four people because you've made a gravy. And that, that was the purpose of the gravy. And then your bread, your biscuit would be for sopping very similar to cornbread, but it's all about a pantry item and something that would fill your stomach. Stick to your ribs is what they used to say. That's right, right. stick um, to your ribs. Mm -hmm. as, as I'm thinking, uh, and I, for, I think we forgot to tell people how long at 450 is it supposed to be in the oven? It's about 15 to 17 minutes. It depends okay. on your oven. Okay, all right, gas versus electric. I mean, I have gas, um, but here I have like a microwave slash convection oven, so it's 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 electric. So um, I think I think electric is actually great for baking. But I think that when when people are eating biscuits and they're making these simple things, I think the reason that we're doing this and and what the point that you brought up is even though a humble ingredient with the care. And, and give it the respect that it is due. And like with the care, you can have something that is so simple, be so delicious and carry so much heart that honestly, if, you, if, if I went to someone's house and I said, I made some biscuits for you versus going to somebody's house, oh, hey, I made this filet mignon for you. I would take the biscuit all day long because the last biscuit that I make when I talk about punching them out and then you keep redoing your dough, the biscuit that I always wanted when I was a kid was the last biscuit, which I call the granny biscuit. And I wanted that biscuit, the one that was just the little pieces all pushed together because I knew that that was the one that my grandmother touched the most. Wow. The connection family-wise, you know, some of my fondest memories are being in Augusta with my grandmother who also made the best macaroni and cheese I've ever had in my entire life. You know, that love. I mean, something about a grandmother's love, it is, and you know, we could love our mamas and our daddies, right? But you're, there's an unconditionality to a grandmother's love that I, you know, to this day, I knew that I was loved on earth because of my grandmother, not because of my parents, because my yeah. grandmother, so I, when you're saying this, I, I feel all of that. I feel all of that. Granny's biscuit. I, I mean, damn, you, look at you. Okay. This is supposed to be about biscuits, Carla. Damn. Okay. I know, but, but you know, it's, I think talking about all of these ingredients and talking about the food this way, if we have the reverence that people had when they were making this food. I mean, to be able to just to be grateful that you could make food that you can eat so that you're not starving or, you know, that you actually get to sit down after working all day, you know what I mean? And to have somebody make something for you, if you could embody that, um, that is the part of carrying on our culture. That is the part that that is why I do what I do. That, that is what gets me excited. You know, um, I, that's how I nurture people. I nurture people through food. I, 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 I want, people can taste your heart through food. Mm. And I think that when you're cooking for somebody and it can be the simplest thing, but when you are trying to give them heart and, and that can be your form of protest 
when you're when you are eating with somebody and you're sitting at a table and you're like okay you may not like what they do but when you ask them to sit at your table and you can make them some food that says i don't like what you do but in this moment i'm going to show you my heart through food that is the ultimate diplomacy and i think mm. as people that's who we are what do you say to people who can't cook like you know i, I always equate that to not caring you know like everyone should be able to cook because they're just ingredients and if you care you're going to put them together in such a way that they taste good right so how do you how do you get people to care about what you're saying right now putting their heart into the meal that they prepare for folks well i think i think that even if you take a grilled cheese sandwich i mean two pieces of bread a piece of cheese okay some butter some mayonnaise i use mayonnaise in my grilled cheese okay hmm. you, where it, do you where do you put the mayonnaise on the outside instead of the softened butter. Of butter. So you have mayonnaise. Not, yes, mayonnaise. Y'all, I'm telling you, it browns so beautifully. But if you care, if you like, you know, like you'll say your grandmother loves you and she makes the best grilled cheese sandwich, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna make this for my kids, and you slap it together, and you got the pan, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm just busy, you know. And then the next thing you know, the the sandwich is askew, is burned on the outside, the cheese is still cold. You, did, you didn't put the love into it. And so that is your report card. So when you come back to it, you're like, huh, I can't cook. No, that's too easy. You didn't care enough. It, everybody who, who doesn't cook can make something. I mean, even a grilled cheese sand, they can make something. And it's too easy to say, I can't cook. You may not want to cook, but even if you're making food for yourself, do you love yourself enough to give yourself something to say, you know what, I love myself enough to make this one thing, even if it's heating up a bowl of soup and putting some croutons or something on top of it where you are Lunch honoring problem. yourself. Yeah, yeah. When you were in London, making uh, your first biscuits by yourself, basically away from your family to honor your grandmother. You had never cooked before. What was, about, what was it about that moment that sparked the desire to want to continue to do not just biscuits, but this whole thing that you do with food as a food anthropologist? You know, um, you're, you call me a food anthropologist and I've even started calling myself the um, culinary matriarch in my family because I know that I am the one who is gonna pass on these recipes because without what I do, my family's not gonna, they, they aren't gonna do it. And so I push my family to learn one recipe that we as a family know. Um, and I know this isn't your question, but like my, my, I want my niece to know how to make the macaroni and cheese. I want my nephew Diallo to know how to make the smothered chicken. I want my other nephew, AJ, to know how to make something. And my brother-in-law does something. And Matthew, you know, because together we will have a beautiful table of food, but without tasking them with it, they won't know. And, and then when I'm gone, everything dies. So... And that that's what happens in our family. So it's not just about everyone knowing a dish, but it's preserving the memories. What's your yes. grandmother's name? What's your grandmother's uh, name? Freddie Mae Glover. Freddie Mae Glover. Freddie Mae Glover. And everything that she put into you, now you're putting into the next generation and they'll put into the next generation. So she right. will never die. Right. And the things that she put on earth will never die through her food. Through her and when I think about that, when I think about that, Karen, and I think about how I didn't even think food would be my thing. I, I didn't start cooking until I was 24. So that's pretty late, right? And think about it. I didn't start cooking until I was 24. 20 years later, I was on Top Chef. And cooking became a way, without my knowing it, picking up the baton from my grandmother. 
and both of my grandmothers, so Freddie Mae and Thelma. And, and so the way that I started cooking was through remembering the feeling that I was always chasing that taste or that feeling and trying to recreate this thing. I didn't have a recipe, which in some ways was better because I was doing it by my taste buds and, and just, and I would grab a recipe and I would tweak it. And so when I was in London and I was chasing this thing, that's why, that's why I tweaked that scone recipe because I was like, I, I want this thing that's in my heart, this food memory that my grandmother gave me. And I started, it wasn't until I started sharing my food with other people that I started getting that thing because it is the love. And, and when I got on Top Chef, that was when I said, you know, I cook with love. It, the name of my catering company was Alchemy Caterers. And the reason I called it Alchemy Caterers is because I said, the food that I make comes through me to you. And I don't know what you need to have when I give it to you, but whatever you need, my prayer is that you will get. And wow. so it is such an honor to cook for other people because they are taking what you make and putting it inside their body, their temple. And that's an honor. And I think that our, our ancestors cooked like that. So when I think about my grandmother, and I didn't really understand this until much later, and, and my grandmothers had passed, but there are times when I'm in the kitchen and I try to summon their spirits. And I know this sounds so crazy, but I really try to embody what they were doing in order to cook for people. That is so powerful. And if we, if we did that in every area of our lives, you would never dishonor those, those ancestors. You would never dishonor the memory of the people that came before you because right. they're present and you wouldn't want to defile that. I, I right. love that. I want to hold on to that. Thank you. Actually, and I, and I live my life like that because I, I, I imagine that they're looking, you know, and I never want to disappoint them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love it. All right. So what's, what's next for you? Carla Hall after this uh, judging of the Halloween uh, baking bake-off. Is it the Halloween bake-off? What have you seen so the far? The Halloween baking championship. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Who's going to win it? All right. I guess you can't give that away, huh? Right. I'd have to, to kill us all. Okay. all right. <laughs> you know what? At this point, I don't know. I don't know who's okay. going to win. It, it, the bakers are really fantastic. So we're still, we have, um, three more days to film and it is fierce. It is really fierce. And so unfortunately I'm going to have to hold this little nugget until October. Judge something when people's palates are so different, you know, cause it's very subjective, I, you know, for you to taste something, for me to taste something, who's to determine, you know, what we're tasting, you know, how do I tell this person is good or bad? It's skill. I think, I think when you are judging someone, you have to put your own personal tastes aside in a way. Like I don't like liver, but I can judge liver. I, I like, I'll know if it's made well, I know if it's seasoned, but I'm not going to say, Oh, this dish is nasty because that is subjective, but I, I can judge something from a technical perspective and say, okay, these flavors go together. So often, you know, we will go to a restaurant and I, I mean, so many people are like, mm, I don't like this, you know, but is it not good or do you not like it? Those are two different things. Right, right, Those right. Two very different things. And, and actually there are three judges and we all have different palates, but when we're talking through things, we get to the nitty gritty of how well somebody did. Because I know, I know that I love sour. And somebody else might say, oh, this is too sour for me, you know? So it's about um, talking it through. Have you tasted something that has been absolutely delicious, but the technique was all wrong? And you don't know how that person arrived at this dish, but the, 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 the dish worked, even though they did everything technically wrong. There, just the other day, a guy did a cake with a... Uh, with a, a crazy ingredient that was the challenge and it was a, i knew it was a happy accident i knew it 
I knew it was a happy accident. And I said, you got lucky, but it works. Okay. I mean, we were, so he got when he was describing it, I was like, what? Mm -mm. And then I ate it. I'm like, what? Okay. Okay. I see you. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I won't take up too much of your time because I'm, I'm actually sleepy now. Uh, it's been a very, <laughs> it's one of those, the longest day in history, but I'm so grateful that you're giving us this little, these little nuggets every week. Um, people are really appreciating and Thank you for it. doing this. Thank you, Karen, no, for standing is... up and taking this call. And just for what you do, you are such a soldier and, and we are marching behind you and, and just giving people outlet and information. Information is power. And what you give to everybody and, and different perspectives and, and you challenge our belief systems and um, and that's what's so important, especially now. I just love, I'm, I, I want us to all kind of get it. I want everyone to live their best lives. I want everyone to be happy so that everyone could be happy because happiness is contagious and you're one of the most joyful people I know on earth. So to be able to just do anything with you let alone get the, that plate of biscuits that will probably, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to fast tomorrow because just the, just looking at the biscuits, I don't gain five pounds. Okay, all right, enough of that. All right, bye Carla. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Uh, Y'all now, you can say you know how to make a biscuit. You don't have any excuse. Go out there and do it, but do it uh, in moderation because uh, we also need to be mindful. Not everyone That's has right. Carla Hall genetics. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you sis, you, I appreciate sir. you. All Thank right, you. cooking with Carla, you. in class with Carla, food anthropologist and culinary matriarch. I love you. Thank you.